All right, well, this morning, um, as we have been, uh, I'm going to continue on the same uh, theme, same direction that we've been discussing uh, about vision, direction, um, about goals, desires. As soon as I put in the proper password to my computer. Oh, there we go. Now I can preach. And uh, if I was to title today's message, it would be called just Faith, the Substance of Things Hoped For. And we talked last week quite extensively. I asked the question over and over and over again to continue to get us to think about that term. What does it mean, things hoped for? And I ask you numerous times just to keep the brain working, trying to figure this out. What does that mean, things hoped for? What things is he talking about and what is the hope for that he's talking about? So whenever we... Uh, we start today, I want to start out with actually Hebrews 11.1. 1. Let's start with the, the scripture, Hebrews 11.1. 1. You like my little picture I made up there? Faith, the substance of things hoped for. Faith is a... Where did my picture go? Oh, there's one scripture. I'm sorry, okay, there's, my, there's a scripture. There's a scripture. There's a picture. Scripture? Oh. What, what's going on with our monitors? Picture, scripture, scripture, picture. Okay. So uh, so we got uh, a passage there that says, we've read this numerous times, and I, I covered the importance of faith when it comes to pursuing our God-given visions and directions because it says faith is a substance of things hoped for. Uh, do you know that faith works best where hope abounds? When there's hope, uh, when there's abounding hope, when there's desire. When we started talking about visions, plans, directions, desires in the beginning of this year, I said last week, I knew we were going to get into this area because once we get these ideas and plans that God's given us, remember, none of this is, none of this is without God. We're done, and none of this is without God. It's all going into prayer and talking to God, getting direction, getting vision, getting purpose. But once we do that and God shares things with us, then how do we actually pursue or go after the things that God told us to do? Well, I can tell you how you do it, by faith. You, by faith. So I knew we would progress into this and I'd start talking about faith as we got close to the uh, coming close to the end of these vision and direction uh, messages. So uh, today that's what I'm going to talk about again. Faith, 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 faith. Everybody say faith. 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 So I covered the importance of it because, you know, uh, faith works best where hope abounds. So then I still have to ask you again, what are your things hoped for? If I, if I was to go around the room right now and I'd say, what are you hoping for? A lot of you would stop for a minute and have to think. I want you to get to the place to where you don't have to stop and think. You already know it's on the tip of your tongue. It's on your vision board. It's in your mouth. It's in your mind. It's before your eyes. Then when I say, hey, what are you hoping for? You say, this right here. This, that's what I'm hoping for. This is what I'm hoping for. This is what I'm praying about. Not have to stop and say, you know, there's some people that... Uh, I've heard these, these things, you know, when it comes to vision and direction. If I was to, you know, some people you say, well, I need more money. And I'd say, what for? The, uh, I don't know. I just need more money. You know, I heard a guy say one time, don't ever, don't ever tell somebody you need more money and then not be able to pinpoint everything you need it for. Don't tell, don't tell somebody, or even God, don't tell God, God, I need enough money to get out of debt. Well, how much do you owe? You know, some people wouldn't even know how much they owe. They couldn't even sit down and give you a figure. Well, then, how, then how, how's God going to be able to give you what you're asking for when you don't even know what you need? He might have already given it to you and you spent it on something else. <laughs> Has any, anybody ever needed something and you got the money and you spent it on something else? And you're like, I still need that. <laughs> I still need that because I, I spent my money on something else. I'm still hoping for that. Whenever, that's why a vision board is so important so you don't lose sight of what you're believing for to begin with. You don't lose sight of what God said. You don't lose sight of the vision. You don't lose sight of the direction. And when I say vision board, I don't care how you do it. I know a lot of folks are getting vision boards and they're putting these things up. I write it down, make a spreadsheet, I don't care. But put, put something in writing so you'll know the things that you're supposed to be pursuing that God told you to do. Do you know what I do whenever I prepare a message for Sunday mornings during the week? Whenever God tells me something, I start writing them down. Why? So I can get in here and say what he said. That I don't step up here and say, now what was that again, God? Uh... I'm not going to come up here in front of you and have a prayer time to find out what God told me to tell you this Sunday morning. <laughs> like, hey guys, hold on. <laughs> I forgot what God said. <laughs> I've forgotten my message. Look, I've look at look. This thing is full of hundreds and hundreds upon hundreds of messages and words, it, and that's why I've got it in here. I don't want to carry the notebook around for all of this. God says it. I write it down. 
I've got pieces of, uh, I've got legal pads all around my office, all around the house. I'm sitting there and I'm writing stuff down, God said. Sometimes I've got to go and read through all of it and pull it apart because they're, they're, they're about different things. Right? I might be praying about this. Well, I'll write that down. Well, then I'll go down and write a little bit further and then I'll write something else. And then I've got to go back and separate the, the topics because they're about different things. Right? But I want to do that so I'll know what God said to keep me on focus, keep my direction in the right way. Uh, I've, said, I've made this statement in here before. You know, it's best to stay on focus, stay on task, stay where God told you to go, stay in the middle of the road where God said go, because did you know for every mile of road, there's two miles of ditch? <laughs> Let me say that again. For every mile of road, there's two miles of ditch. And you don't want to get in either one of them. You don't want to go to the extreme on either side. You're like, God said go this way, that's where I want to go. Remember, that's why we put those little bumper things up at the bowling alley. We, so I put those little bumper things on. You don't want to be in the gutter. Get out of the gutter. Well, a vision is how you stay out of the gutter. Right? A purpose, a vision, a direction, a God-given purpose, a God-given direction. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is kind of like this picture. You see these, these guys here? All of the material needed to build the house is there, the blueprints there. The, well, that's the substance. Well, the thing hoped for is what you're actually building. Right? It's things hoped for. What are you hoping for? Uh, you, you have to answer that. And I'm going to probably say this quite a few times before we get out of here today. What are you hoping for? What are you hoping for? It takes, and this is the truth about faith. You know, it takes faith to approach God. It takes faith to believe that God hears you when you pray. It takes faith to believe God will answer your prayer. We read in James 4, 2 last week that we have not because we ask not. It takes faith to go to God and ask for things. But could it be that we are not well trained in how to communicate with God? That's why we don't talk to God more than we should. Is we're not well trained in how to actually communicate and express. And you know, a lot of times we have trouble talking to each other. Anybody, or is that just me? <laughs> Sometimes I, I have a lot of trouble communicating with people. They just don't. I just don't know why they don't know how to communicate with me. Well, I know it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> it's got it's got to be them, right? Because I'm a I, I'm a, a master communicator. <laughs> so I don't know what offended them. I don't know what what got them upset when I said that. I've always heard some some people say, "Well, you know, sometimes it's not what you say; it's how you say it." I'm like, "Well, how do you say it? I just said it." Like you, that's what I mean, right? There. <laughs> So, but could it be that we don't know how to talk to God, that we're not trained in the area of, of, of talking to God? And then when it comes to talking to God, could it really be that we don't even have a plan for our lives beyond today or next week or next year? We have no plans. We've made no plans. We, we don't have any direction. So there's really no reason to go to God, <laughs> talk to God about us doing nothing. <laughs> Let me say that again. Talk to God. What am I going to go talk to God about? Nothing. I don't have a vision. I don't have a plan. I don't have a direction. So I'm just going to go. That's why it's so hard for some people to go pray is because for them it's just quiet time. You know, we have a moment of silence. And people call that prayer. And that's fine. Have a moment of silence if you want it. That'd be like me trying to talk to Michelle. And I say, Michelle, we need to talk. Let's have a moment of silence. It's not a lot going to be communicated, right? Because she knows there's not a lot going on up here anyway. <laughs> so she's like, I know he ain't thinking anything worth value, so I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> right? So we don't, need, a, we don't get, need to get with God and have a moment of silence. We need to get with God and have a, com a conversation. And the way we're going to have this conversation with God is, first of all, have a plan, have a direction, go to God, spend time with God, praise God, worship God, enjoy His company, but then talk about some things. Amen? It's not hard to have faith to do nothing. I promise it's really not. And people struggle with their faith. I need more faith. I need more faith. And I'm like, for what? It takes no faith to sit on your couch and eat chicken and watch movies. <laughs> and Oreo cookies with milk. Not that I've done these things. <laughs> not not that, I'm, not that I'm well versed in chicken and Oreo cookies, but I just know that I've heard people talk about it. Okay, that's what it, it doesn't take faith to do that. What kind of faith does that take? 
But I'm talking about God giving you a vision, purpose, plan, something that God... Some of you have got visions and purposes and plans God's told you for years, and you still believe that it's impossible for you to do it. The song this morning said, nothing is impossible. My Bible says nothing is impossible to those who believe God. What is that vision? What is that direction? And same with our missionary folks. Their vision, their direction is go to Guatemala. If, what if you'd have told them 10 years ago, hey, you guys are going to move to Guatemala. 10 years ago, they said, you're crazy. But God kept talking to them. They kept thinking about it. They kept going. And then this vision comes on the scene. And this vision gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And they start wholly giving themselves to the vision. They start wholly committing to the call. They start wholly giving themselves to this direction that God's giving them uh, in their hearts and their minds. They put it on a vision board. They write it out. They say, okay, God, this is what you going to want us to do. And now they're actually setting a date for when they're going to leave to go to Guatemala. Now, I don't know about you, but it worked the same with you with whatever it is you're desiring that God has told you to do even if it's just partnering with them. Like, God, I'd like to partner with them. Well, get a vision for it. Get a goal. Get a purpose. Say, I mean, some of you probably would love to buy the pastor his airplane. Get a vision for it. Get a goal for it. <laughs> Write it down. Quit playing with this thing. Write it down. <laughs> some, I was told last week exactly what God was telling me, though. Same thing I'm telling you guys. Somebody asked me, said, well, Pastor, have you actually narrowed down what kind of airplane you want? And I'm like, no. <laughs> well, how are, you going to, how are you going to know? I'm like, well, I've got about four or five of them in mind. I know I can't have all of them. So. But then again, maybe I can. But, <laughs> but that, look at Michelle shaking her head. She's like, no, you can't. No. <laughs> no. It's just a desire of mine. I, 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 there's no way in the world I'm going to get an airplane and let it take me away from my relationship with God. There's no way in the world I would trade any earthly thing for my relationship with God. But I like to have fun in this life. I like to enjoy life. And if there's things you enjoy and that you like to do, why would you think God's trying to keep you from it just to keep you frowny-faced, whiny pants all the time? <laughs> you know, you look at some people, it looks like they just eat lemons all day long, and they think God keeps them that way. You're like, really? Really? <laughs> Is this what God's doing to you so you can punish the rest of us? I wish God would bless you. Because you're not helping the rest of us one bit with that attitude. Please, Lord, bless them with something. If it isn't nothing but a smile, give them that. Do something. <laughs> See, could, could it be that we just don't have a direction or vision? Now, this is what I think, too. I believe many people would make more plans if they knew their God was willing to make their plans a success. I believe more people would make more plans if they knew their God was willing to make their plans a success. What would you plan to do if you knew God wouldn't let you fail? Come on, somebody. What would you hope for? What would you dream for? What would you put your faith out there for if you knew God was behind you in the endeavor? What would you say? What would you think? I know the first thing you say is, yeah, but. <laughs> yeah, but. Get your butt out of the way. Okay? And say... Hey, God, I've had this desire forever. Michelle keeps saying, I mean, it could be a small thing. Michelle keeps saying she's going to do some skydiving this year. You're like, <laughs> I'm like, I, I, you're crazy is all I know. I, I've actually sat in an airplane and watched people jump out before, and I'm like, that's crazy. <laughs> Just keep me flying. Because <laughs> I, I used to be afraid of flying, I thought, and then I realized I'm not afraid of flying. I'm afraid of not flying. The, the flying part's just fine. Just keep flying. The not flying is whenever you start to sweat. Like, whoo, whoo, what do you do now? So, so it's just she's like she's been talking about this for years, and now she's already narrowing it down. It's going to be this year. It's going to be the end of this year, and she's planning on it, making plans. And it, whatever it is, you know, and, and you say, well, she don't need to do that. What's that got to do with the Bible? Nothing except the Bible says you ride up on the high places. That's why, I think, that's why I think about an airplane. My boss says, I can ride up on the high places. So I'm like, it didn't say to jump off the high places, though. So. I don't know about all that. I, I don't know. But what would you do if you knew God wasn't going to let you fail? If you knew the endeavor that you had gone to God, that you had prayed, you spent time with God, you have spent some time talking to Him, Him talking to you, and He said, now go do this. And you say, I've got the backing of my God. How can I'm going right there because that's where God said go. There's no way in the world I can fail because my God said go do it. Amen? Amen. Come on, somebody. Now, now along, now, along the way, there's still 
two miles a ditch. You still have to stay on task, on focus, and go after what God said and not be running left and right, every distraction, squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. <laughs> I knew I couldn't do it. I knew I couldn't do it. I knew I couldn't do it. And wobbling all over the road. You ever seen a drunk driver? Yeah, they're all over the road. That's what some Christians are. God said, go there, and we're like, mm, mm. I mean, we're not even close to where he said get to go to. It's just stay focused. Broken focus is why most of us don't accomplish the things God said for us to do. Stay focused. Vision is the way to stay focused. Amen? Hebrews 11.6. How about this? We're talking about faith. Hebrews 11.6. Everybody turn to, your, turn to your devices, whether they're covered with paper or plastic. Some of you have plastic Bibles. <laughs> Hebrews 11.6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You notice what it says, without faith, it's what? Impossible, impossible to please God. It doesn't say, you notice what it doesn't say? It doesn't say, you know, without faith it's going to be kind of hard to please God. Without faith it's going to be a little difficult. Without faith, I mean, you, maybe you will, maybe you won't. No, it says without faith it's impossible. Just plain and simple. You just can't do it. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So then on the other hand, you have to ask yourself, how can I please God? If the opposite were true, if it's impossible to please Him without faith, what do you think would please Him? Having faith. Having faith. Okay, now let's go back to what we started with. What is faith? Things hoped for. Don't be afraid to say it. Some of y'all are afraid to say it. Oh, well, things, I don't know if this is right or not. You know, some of y'all are the same way in school. You wouldn't raise your hand to answer anything. To... <laughs> How many of you would answer the questions in school? Raise your hand. How many of you are not going to raise your hand no matter what I say? <laughs> just, just, just checking. Just checking. So I know who to look at now. So you think about what he said. He says, without faith, it's impossible to please him. So if we uh, look at it the other way, then faith would be the way we please God. So then faith is what? The substance of things what? Hoped for. What are you hoping for that will please God? Think. Think. What things? Think. Think. I'm hoping for faith. No, faith is the substance of those things. What are you hoping for? You want to please God? Get some hope. You want to please God? Get a vision. You want to please God, get some direction. God, I, I know that God is not mad at me when I'm sitting there eating my chicken and Oreo cookies. But after that, I've got to get up and do something. After that, I've got to work on the vision. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, might, you might want to talk to Elsie after service. I'm... I don't know if that's on my vision board right now, talking to Elsie after service. I'm, <laughs> Elsie. <laughs> Thank you, Elsie. <laughs> so, so, why, so why is it impossible to please God? Why is it hard? Why is it, it doesn't say it's hard or just difficult. It says it's impossible to please Him but by faith. Why? Because it says that those who come to God must believe that He is what? God. And then right after that, it says then that he is a rewarder of those that come to him, those that seek him. He said, it's impossible to please God if you're not even going to believe, first of all, that he is God. And then second, if you don't come to him believing, he's going to reward you for the seeking. You're not going to please God like that. I mean, it's just like the offering a minute ago. You see what God will do? You see what Jesus done? He said, Paul, let me, or Peter, not Paul, but Peter, the other Paul. Peter, let me, let me borrow your boat. He goes out into the water, preaches a message, and for that, for that time in the boat that he got to preach, now he says, let's go get some fish. Do you get the picture? God says, give, and it shall be given. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall I put fish in your boat. I mean, shall men give unto your bosom. <laughs> because of your willingness to serve God, because of your willingness to do something for God, he says, I will reward you for that. I will reward you. I will, I will prove myself faithful to you. But first of all, you have to believe he's God. And second, you have to believe the reward will come. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. amen. 
See, notice, notice that he did say that he's the, he that cometh to God. Well, that means she too. That means he and she. So it actually gives the in, inference there that we're actually supposed to be approaching God. We're supposed to be coming to God. Do you know how many Christians won't go to God? They'll come to church, fulfill a duty, and never really experience God in the process. And he says, look, first of all, you have to believe that I am God, and then come to me, and I'll reward you for that. So what he's telling us is, look, the door's open. Come in, right? I've, I've got an open-door policy. Come in when you're ready. How about that? Isn't it good to know God's got an open-door policy? He says, come in, talk to me. Talk to me, fellowship with me. That's good stuff, amen? Amen. So I believe God is expecting us to approach Him. I believe God is expecting us to approach Him. Amen? And if you want to, if you want to please God, you've got to use your faith. So what was your faith again? Substance of things. It says it right there. It says it right there. I mean, so you, you, you can't be wrong. See, see this is why... I'll, Back to the, 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 the classroom. The reason a lot of folks wouldn't raise their hand and, and say what they thought is because they're afraid of being wrong. You know, when it comes to trusting God, you've got to quit being afraid of being wrong. You've got to quit being afraid of being wrong. You read the Bible, you say what it says, and you stand on that word. Quit being afraid of, of, of saying what God said about you because in fear of somebody else thinking you might be wrong. I, Somebody said I really preached like I was on fire last week. Oh, there was something burning on the inside of me last week, and it's about you know I, you know you ever heard that saying don't play well with others. I don't play well with devils. <laughs> I don't play well with 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 religious spirits. I don't play well with with attacks from the enemy for me or the church. I don't play well with that kind of stuff. So that's why last week I said a lot of the things that I did, not to come against anybody, not to come against whatever they're teaching, saying, or otherwise, but to pre- preach truth and let truth stand on its own. You have to let the Word of God fight its own fight. You have to let the Word of God fight its own fight. I didn't say it. You didn't say it. God said it. And He says not one jot or tittle of that Word will pass away. The earth and everything in it will pass away. But that Word will stand the test of time. That Word will stand forever. What that Word says is true. And it will always be true. It will never change. Amen? So when somebody comes in and they start telling me the Word says this and you ought to be preaching this and the Word says that, I'm like, no, we're done with this discussion. So what does the Bible say? What does the Word of God say? Amen? And my Bible says, without faith it's impossible to please Him. It says, I can, I can use my faith, and my faith is the substance of things hoped for. Amen? What are things hoped for? Your desires, your visions, your plans. So I ask you again, what are the things you're hoping for? Some of you are, are actually probably achieving everything you're hoping for right now. <laughs> I believe, but this is what I, believe, I believe God is pleased when we put our faith to work. Well, He says it. That's what He talks about pleasing Him. I believe God is pleased when we put our faith to work. I do not believe we should let our faith lie dormant. I believe we should be exercising our faith. We should be stretching our faith. We should be putting our faith to work all the time. We should be reaching and stretching for the things that God says we could have. I believe your faith can grow. I believe there's talk in the, in the Bible there talks about so many different types of levels. There's little faith, no faith, great faith. Where'd your faith go? I mean, Jesus talks about different levels and different types of faith. I believe our faith can grow, but it will not grow until you start to stretch it and start to exercise it. Exercise it. Get there of that chicken and Oreo cookies. I understand what you're saying. You got, but your faith will not grow until you begin to exercise that faith. You have, to, you have to start somewhere with your faith. Take a step in one direction. Take another step. Start stretching that faith. Start using your faith for believing in something. Amen? Come on, somebody. <laughs> you know, I believe, that, I believe it takes faith to put a vision board together that we've been talking about. You know, it even takes more faith to believe what you put on it. But what does Habakkuk 2.2 2 say? Habakkuk. This is a, a, a basic English version that I'm going to read here. You can read the King James. It says pretty much the same thing. But Habakkuk 2.2 2 says, And the Lord gave me an answer. And he said, Put the vision in writing. Make it clear on stones so that the reader may go quickly. Write the vision down. 
Put it where people can see it. Put it on table so while those that read it can run with it. They can do what it says. Whenever you're putting a vision board together, when you're writing down the things you want, why are you doing that? So you can run with that thing you put down. So you can carry that thing that you've put down. You can make that thing work. You can make it come to pass. I've used this example many times in here. We set up an Israel trip years in advance before we took it, but the people that were going to go to Israel committed real early in the process that we're going to Israel. And for that whole two-year process, we said, we're putting money away, we're saving, we're doing this, we're doing we are planning to go to Israel. And guess what? We went to Israel. Faith, vision, direction, it takes timing, it takes planning, planning. it takes purpose. Purpose-filled actions. Amen, somebody? Amen. Amen. All right, so I personally believe that we are wasting our time waiting on God to do something that we're not hoping or asking for. <laughs> Let me say that again. I personally believe we're wasting our time if we're waiting on God to do something that we're not hoping or asking for. I, I believe it. I believe it. And it's going to be awfully hard for you to change my mind. I believe it. Amen? Amen. So this is my other, th other question I have to ask you is why get mad at God because He doesn't give us the things that we think He should give us but then we never asked or expected him to begin with. Do you know how many people will get mad at God because of what he didn't give them? And he's like, well, you never asked. Remember, I used this analogy last week. There was two sons. One was a prodigal. One stayed home. The prodigal came back. The father lavished things on him. The other son got mad. The other son said, why didn't you give me these things? The father said, you never asked. It was all yours. Now, you're going to sit here and sulk and be mad because I gave him the stuff you had all the time. You're just wanting to be religious. And then he comes back and I give him things and now you want to punish him instead of rewarding the fact that, hey, your son, my son was once dead and now he's alive. Your brother was gone and he's come back home. All you want to do is punish him and be religious. Hmm, come on, somebody. Whenever the things that was in the father's house was the other sons the whole time. Sometimes the, 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 that prodigal son, the one that left, gets all the teaching. When we want to talk about that little, little arrogant dude at home. That religious-minded dude at home that wasn't doing right. He was all about works and all about religion and all about, I, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to ask the Father because I don't want to look like I'm, you know, I want to be humble about this thing, you know. <laughs> but then, guess what? Character is exposed when one boy gets the fatted calf and the other one don't. He's like, why don't you give me a fatted calf? He's like, why didn't you ask? Come on, somebody. The way church folks do. Somebody comes in and gets blessed, and the church folks have been there for 25 years. Like, why are you blessing them, Lord? It's like, because you ain't asking for nothing. And why be mad at them? Because they got it. Come on, somebody. That's good preaching right there. I, man, I hope this video works today. <laughs> We've been having some struggles with our video lately. so Because right. I, think, I think it's kind of sad when you think about it. Think about this. We won't spend time getting a vision. We don't spend time growing our faith. We don't ask God in faith for what we desire, and then when things don't go our way, we blame God. Or, or we even do better. We come up with reasons why God failed instead of blaming it on our faith. You know, we're, 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 we're not building our faith. We're not growing. We're not getting a vision. So we don't get the thing we think we should, and then we turn around and say, well, you know, God don't heal everybody. Well, you know, God don't prosper everybody. You know, but why? Because that was my experience. You know, I was thinking about this, and not, it's not a knock at these people that ride their buggies up and down the road out there. But what if they're sitting in their homes today saying, there ain't no such thing as an iPhone. There's no, no such thing as a, a TV that you can watch off of your phone and flip it up there and watch. There's no such thing as that. But just because you hadn't seen it don't mean it doesn't exist. Just because you don't believe it. Just because you won't go after it. Come on, somebody. <laughs> And then them say, well, God never gave us any of that stuff. Well, you, you don't ever ask. If you don't know it's available, one, you've got to go to God, find out what he says, and then desire that thing. And don't sit around God saying that he never does it just because you don't have it. He never wants to give it just because you don't have it. Maybe you're not using your faith to get it. You ever think about that? I know I've, I made somebody mad here a while back because they, they went home and told some folks that I was blaming it on them for them not being healed and said it was their faith and it was their fault. And I'm thinking, well, maybe it is. You ever stop and think about that? Maybe it is your fault. Not because of your sin. See, somebody, well, what, what sin did I commit that I'm sick? Nobody, it ain't about sin. It's about faith for believing now. It's about putting the faith forward and saying, I believe. I stand on the word. I'm going to put my faith out there. I'm going to stretch it. I'm going to exercise it. Come on, somebody. 
It's not about what, because some people, well, well, what did I do wrong that I got sick? It ain't about wrong or right. It's about believing once the issue, whatever arises, you stand on your faith then. Don't look at God and say, well, it's God's fault. It's the preacher's fault. It's the so-and-so's fault. What about your, your faith? What about your believing? You know, I, I talk to people sometimes, and I counsel with them, and I can sit there and look across the table at them and tell right away that they're never at fault. They're never wrong. Never will be as long as they live. And I'm even wrong for suggesting they might be wrong about something. <laughs> you just don't know how wrong I am. And sometimes I'm looking at them thinking, I better not say that. I better not say that. Um, if I say that, I know I'm wrong because they're not going to believe they're, right, they're wrong. They're going to believe I'm wrong for saying they're wrong. And is it worth it? <laughs> and then I have to say, yes. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> so so this is a question I have to say for all of us. What if things really are going just the way you're believing right now? What if things in your life are going just the way you're believing right now? What if things are, are going and they're still going to continue to go just the way you keep saying they're going right now? What if the Word of God is true? What if, what if really in the Bible when, when it says James 4, 2, you have not because you ask not? What if in Matthew 12, 37, it says, By your words you're justified, and by your words you're condemned? What if in Proverbs it says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof? What if Jeremiah is also true that says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end, to give you good things, to give you a promise? What if the Bible is actually true? Hmm. And also, what if some of the things that we think, that life is just just by chance or on a whim? That's what a lot of people think. And I, But I believe the Bible is true. I don't think things are just chance and whim. I believe the Bible is true. And I believe we do eat the fruit of our lips. I believe we do live what we believe we're going to live. Now, this isn't just some mind over matter nonsense. I'm not talking about some uh, new age belief. I'm talking about you as a person believing a certain way and then living out that belief versus going to the word of God that says be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that good and perfect will of God amen and how are you going to do that you're going to get a vision you're going to get a direction for it come on somebody right, I, better, I, better st I better start winding down here Lord Jesus what page am I on See, uh, this is what I believe. I, I don't think things are just by chance or on a whim. I personally believe we're supposed to be actively involved in our lives. <laughs> so I personally believe you're supposed to be actively involved in your life. We're supposed to be active, active participants in the vision and plans and purposes for our lives. You know how people sit around and say, well, if God wants me to have it, he'll give it to me. As, uh, people still do it a lot. Millions of people do Well, if God wanted me to have it, he'd give it to me. If God wanted you to, wanted, wanted you to ride ride in, in something with wheels on him you'd have been born with wheels on your hind end <laughs> if you'd have wanted me to fly I'd have been born with wings I mean it's, it's just silly remarks well if God wants me to have it I'll have it God wants you to wear clothes did he clothe you this morning or did you help with that <laughs> well if God wants me to take a bath he'll give me one <laughs> I mean if, if God wants me to have an education he'll give me one if God wants me to read my Bible, he'll just, you know, osmosis. All this nonsense about, well, if God wants me to have it, he'll just give it to me. That's not biblical. It is not biblical. So I believe we're supposed to be active participants in the vision, plans, and purpose for our lives. So once again, my suggestion is, is that we spend some time with God to work on those visions and plans that he has for us. And then we write those things down. We put them on paper. We create some visuals. We start speaking the things we desire. Why? Because faith is what? So we really should answer that question for ourselves. What things are we hoping for? What things are we so desiring? Good question, huh? Good question. What, what is it that your heart is desiring? What is, what is the purpose? And I know it's, it's a hard one to answer sometimes, but then that's why we need to go spend time with God. Once again, I know that there's, there's folks that believe what I'm teaching is a name it and claim it prosperity gospel. I've heard them say it. My thought is, how, how much fun is it really living a life that you don't know where it's going? 
How much fun is it living a life of drudgery with no vision, no passion, no desire, no, 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 no uh, thoughts or hopes of the future ever changing other than just living out this one long lineal line of drudgery? I don't know. I'm not that way. That's why I play golf. That's why I fly airplanes. That's why I preach. That's why I do things I do. That's why I, I preach the gospel. Because God said preach the gospel. That's why I'll move from Florida to Minnesota to preach the gospel. I'm not afraid to step out and do what God said do. I'm not afraid to get a vision and God say, hey, go do this. And then we go do that. Amen? I'm just not afraid. I'm not afraid of believing what the Word says. I'm not afraid of standing on the Word because my, my God says the Word will never fail me. Why? Because I've got God backing up the Word. And for somebody to come in and say, well, this is just about you getting something. I just said earlier, it's not about me getting anything unless what I get I can share with everybody else. Anybody that thinks all this is is just about you and uh, acquiring stuff has missed the whole point. It's about stretching your faith, building your faith, pleasing God by believing something. We don't want to get to heaven and be famous for believing nothing. God look at us and say, well, what did you believe for? Oh, I believed I'd get to heaven. And here I am. Look at me. He's like, well, what did you accomplish? Well, my preacher said I didn't want to name it and claim it and blab it and grab it and get all prosperous and none of that stuff. My preacher said, be humble. Don't try to get enough that I could help anybody else. My preacher said, don't have a vision. Don't have a direction. Just preach the Bible. <laughs> well, mm, really? <laughs> I believe I am preaching the Bible. Because my point is when it comes to Christians and uh, uh, Christian believers, there's a time where even the, 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 the most well-versed Christian in the Bible will get to a place of complacency if they lose vision. Church gets dull. Church gets boring. Church gets old. The pastor starts preaching things you don't like. <laughs> the, pra the praise and worship team don't sing that song you used to like anymore. They've moved on. They, everything is just uncomfortable around you anymore. That's what happens when people lose vision. Because they think this is supposed to supply all of their vision. And it's not. I'm not supposed to come in here and pray for you and expect you to go out there and not have to pray because I did. I'm not supposed to come in here and read the Bible and then you go out there and not read it because I read it to you. I'm not supposed to do your believing for you. The church isn't supposed to do your believing for you. The church isn't your God. The church isn't your source. And people that make the church their source and make the pastor their source and make the people in church their source and don't have a vision outside of this, sooner or later this will get uncomfortable. This will get frustrating. And then you have to make a decision. Do I want to stay frustrated or do I want to go somewhere else? Now, I believe anybody that comes here is coming for the right reason, first of all. Because they know what we preach out here. I believe anybody shows up through those doors like, hallelujah. <laughs> but I still believe that even coming in here, it doesn't any, any church really, if, if you're not careful, if you lose a vision that God has given you for yourself, the church will eventually stop being the source that you expected it to be. And frustration will set in. Because you, there was no... No, no forward thinking there was nothing down the road and we need vision for our lives I love all of you guys and I've, I say it all the time I appreciate all of you guys so much but you're not my source you're not my source I need vision I need direction I need purpose outside of these four walls you need vision you need purpose you need direction outside of these four walls it is a very staunch religious minded person that thinks all you need is this Bible and nothing else they're the ones that will come into church and look at you funny because you're here. We had somebody come in the doors last week, and they sat down in this church, and when they, before they left this church, they said, this is one of the nicest, friendliest churches I have been in in forever. Amen? Amen? They had to let me know that this was one of the best places they had been in in years. Such a friendly group. Such a loving group. Amen? 
Well, that's what people can do whenever they have vision and they have purpose and they have direction. They know that they can love on anybody. They're not afraid of somebody else taking their purpose or their vision or their direction. I've got purpose. I've got vision. I've got direction. I can love on you and help you fulfill yours. Amen. Amen. We can have freedom. We can have purpose. We can have joy. And we can all do it together. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. <laughs> Woo! I better quit. I better... I better quit. I gotta. I gotta quit early enough. I go home and exercise. <laughs> and they know it. I look. That's why I'm gonna name. My, that's why I'm gonna name my airplane is Jim. <laughs> Michelle said, "Where are you going?" I'm going to the gym. <laughs> yeah, how you like that, huh? Take that. One. Could I have a prayer agreement team come? I mean, a healing team. Could I have a healing team come forward, please? Uh, prayer agreement team and our prophetic deliverance team. And uh, God bless you, Cheryl Clapmeyer. Yeah. <laughs> God bless you, Cheryl Clapmeyer. If you guys would stand to your feet.